Hey, it's Ben from Candrone. I'm Chris from Candrone. And today we're gonna to be looking at the drone regulations in Canada versus the United States. So let's jump straight into it. Let's look at drone licensing requirements. Yeah, so in the United States, uh, drone licensing is pretty straightforward. It's more intent-based than it is safety-based. So if you're looking to fly for fun, for hobby, you wanna get your trust certification. Uh, that's simply accomplished by getting on the FAA's website. And then you take a short course that has a quick quiz at the back of it that essentially once you pass that quiz, you've got your trust certification. You can print that out and take it with you, you're required to by the FAA whenever you're flying for hobby or recreation. Now, if you want to earn money make flying drones in the United States, you have to get your Part 107. So your Part 107 is a little bit more involved. And when you go to take your Part 107, the first thing you have to do is reserve a time at a testing center approved by the FAA, usually a local airport. Once you go into the FAA's designated zone, you take their test and you pass it, you're then issued a Part 107 license. You actually get uh, sort of like a driver's license, but it's got all of your information as a pilot. At that point, you are able to fly commercially in the United States for any reason. Um, so as long as you are working in furtherance of a business, that's the phrase that's used by the FAA, you will need that Part 107. After that, with your Part 107 and your Part 107 only, every 24 months you are required by the FAA to do their recurrent knowledge exam. That just makes sure that you're up to date on all of the new regulations that come into place for the Part 107 certification. So every two years, essentially, you have to go back and take that test over again. What's nice though, is recently they just implemented an online solution before you had to go back and repay the fee that there was to take the test. Um, now you can just get on your computer, it's totally free. You take the test and then you just re-up your certification. Right on, so in Canada, we have Transport Canada's RPAS program. There's no distinction between commercial versus uh, recreational uses of drones. Uh, what they're primarily concerned about is what type of airspace you're flying in, how close you're going to be flying uh, to people that are not involved in your, your operation, and the proximity to uh, the aerodromes and heliports that we have around here. So in Canada, we have the basic pilot certificate, which is essentially that uh, first program that you mentioned what was at the trust certification. Right. Um, that's at the very basic type of level that uh, anyone that looks is looking to operate a drone should get the certificate for. That will allow you to fly in uncontrolled airspace. You have to keep a minimum distance of 100 feet away from bystanders. And there's, uh, I believe it's three nautical miles from an aerodrome and one nautical mile from a heliport. The equivalent to the Part 107 would be the Advanced Pilot Certification. And this will allow you to operate drones within controlled airspace, uh, within 100 feet of people, and a little bit closer to aerodromes uh, with advanced uh, authorization from NAV Canada. Uh, there is one other certificate called the Special Flight Operation Certificate, which allows you to go kind of beyond what is allowed for the basic or the advanced pilot certificate. So this would mean if you're flying with uh, a aircraft that weighs over 25 kilograms, uh, if, you're, if you wanna fly above 400 feet uh, AGL, or if you're uh, a foreign pilot, for example, this is something that you need to get in order to operate your drones in Canada. So in terms of registrations for, for drones, um, micro drones in Canada don't need to be uh, registered and you don't need a pilot certificate to fly. Uh, when you get into the small R-Pass, which is the small remotely piloted aircraft systems, um, which is your, your common drone like the Mavic uh, 3 Enterprise that we have here, M300 for example, that uh, is in the category of between 250 grams and 25 kilograms, and that must be registered uh, in Canada in order to um, operate legally. Okay. Yeah, how, how is it uh, in the States? Yeah, so in the United States, um, ours is a little bit different. Uh, when you're flying what we call, a, not a micro drone, but a sub 250 drone is what we term, term them as, you don't need to register that as long as you're flying for hobby. If you're flying for hobby and your drone weighs less than 250 grams, you don't need to register it. You can fly it as much as you'd like uh, without that registration piece. If you are flying it commercially or if your drone is over 250 grams, you are required to register them no matter what the intent is. So with the, the two, sub 250 drones, if you're flying that commercially, you must register it. Or if you're flying a drone that's 250 grams or more, you must register it as well. That over 250 gram drone category, if you're flying recreationally, you still have to register it. And if you're flying commercially, you have to register it as a Part 107 drone. Registration's all the same. The system works exactly the same. It's just categorizing the drone based upon the intent. So there is a distinction between registering it for recreational use and for uh, commercial purposes. That's correct. In the United States, right on. Uh, so in terms of strictness, um, I know a lot of people buy the Mavic Mini uh, in order to kind of skirt the rules and then kind of do whatever they want. So how is it in the States? 
Yeah, so the States, uh, again, it sort of comes down to the difference between the Canadian micro drone and the United States sub 250 drones. The sub 250 drones are treated exactly the same as the larger drones with the exception of, uh, you know, you don't have to register them. If you're flying over people, if you're flying close to airports, if you're flying in uh, controlled airspace, it, the, the same rules apply to your mini drones, your sub 250 drones, as they do the larger format drones. So I know that Canada is a little bit more relaxed with micro drones, where the United States is a little, it, they, they show the same level of restriction on uh, sub 250 with that registration exception. Right on. Yeah. Uh, in Canada, yeah, like I said, people buy these drones in order to kind of have a little bit more freedom. But the caveat is uh, you can still get charged with reckless and kind of endangerment of operating the drone. Um, so it's still kind of a gray area in terms of enforcement and, and uh, what is considered dangerous. Um, so it's, it's pretty wide open at this, at this time, but um, hopefully, you know, people don't screw it up for the industry and, and do kind of stupid stuff with this, uh, this type of drone here. That's a lot of the problem that we run into sometimes though in the FAA is um, the restrictiveness of uh, the liability on the pilot. You know, especially for part 107 pilots, a, a lot of us believe that the liability should be on us, but we should have our restrictions loosened up. We should be able to fly in controlled airspace. We should be able to fly in areas that uh, pilots that just have their trust certificate might not necessarily be able to fly. So in a way, I think Canada's sort of on a better path that way. But um, again, you know, it's always about flying safe, right? So no matter what you're doing, what the intent is, always making sure that you're flying in safe environments. 100%. So if I was a, you know, I'm from, I'm Canadian and I'd like to come over to the United States to fly a drone, what would be the process uh, for that? It's real easy. So if you're flying uh, your drone, you just need to get the certification that is required for anybody else that would be flying in the United States. Uh, you do need to go through a few different steps uh, as far as establishing yourself with the United States government if you're flying commercially. If you're coming here as a hobbyist and you just want to get some sightseeing done, all you have to do is bring your drone over, take the trust certification, get your trust certificate, and then you just need to register your drone as a hobbyist drone. Even if it is sub 250, the FAA does require that foreign pilots still register their drone with the FAA so that they can track any type of information they need for that. If you're flying commercially, you do need to get in touch with our Office of Commerce and just let them know that you are flying for uh, in furtherance of a business or for profit and then at that point you need to take the part 107 pass it once you have your part 107 in the US as a foreign pilot you can fly commercially as much as you like. right yeah and there's also kind of uh, implications on your visa right you can't be going over to the United States to work so it's probably uh, very similar vice versa um, I hate to say it but in Canada it's not uh, as easy for foreign pilots to get their pilot certificate over here um, so as I kind of mentioned earlier, you need to get your special flight operation certificate, which is kind of an application process where you have to go through the same process of getting your advanced pilot certificate in Canada. So you still have to go through a ground school. You have to take the online advanced exam. Then you have to do a flight review, which is kind of the in-person practical test. Um, and then, then finally you can submit your SFOC to Transport Canada and, and wait for them to approve that. So it's a much more likely lengthy process um, but uh, if you ever need to do a job over here I guess you could I guess they, that's how you could uh, they are protecting their 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 uh, our industry over here you have to hire somebody potentially over here to, to do that for you now I'm, I'm American I'm from the United States and I, I've flown in Canada here with micro drones because it sort of is a little bit more lax for foreign pilots with micro drones however if I wanted to bring my Mavic 3 over to fly it here I would still need to get an SFOC but what's the difference between the process of a commercial flight versus a recreational flight. There's no distinction um, as you just need to get an SOC and uh, it doesn't matter if you're here to just capture footage for fun or if you're looking to do some work. Again, I guess there's, there's implications with your visa and immigration, but uh, there's no distinction between if you're going to make money with the drone or not. So that concludes the difference between the United States and Canada drone regulations. Yeah, if we missed anything or you feel there's something we should talk about in a future video, let us know down in the comments below. If you liked this video, hit the thumbs up icon. And if you really like drone content, make sure you subscribe to this channel too. And while you're at it, hit the bell icon. You'll get a notification every time we post a new video.